Hi everyone, different setup for you today, different view. <laughs> I finally got round to getting that ring light and uh, so I'm filming using that one with my phone camera instead of my laptop which would normally be on the desk. So um, I haven't got such a large screen in front of me that, that I'm used to so I feel like I'm probably a bit squinty so um, because the old eyes aren't what they once were. Um, so I'm sorry if I'm a bit squinty or if I'm looking in the wrong place. Um, you just have to put up with it. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure how much of a successful purchase this ring light was. It wasn't terribly expensive, which uh, I suppose is a good thing. It's one of those that's supposed to have three different tones of white. And then each tone has different levels of brightness, right? So <laughs> I filmed a little practice bit using each of the different tones. And when I played it back, uh, I couldn't tell any difference. <laughs> In fact, even more depressing than that was that I also filmed a bit where I just turned the thing off altogether and I couldn't notice any difference then either. So hey ho, it's on. I've got it on. We'll see. Okay, so I thought um, I would show you um, what I've been doing with the diorama, with some of the bits I've got for the diorama. Um, I haven't got any new dolls or anything to show you, but I thought I would, as we're talking about the diorama, I would show you the two brides that. Um, I'm thinking would suit the diorama because they're my two circus girls. So this is the lovely Amber. I'll um, give you a close up. I'm not sure if I've shown her on my channel before. I mean, I've shown I've shown her on, on when I've done the Blythe when I had the when the Cindy house was the Blythe house. Um, I've shown you them there, but I don't think I've um, shown you um, any of them close up before. Um, so this is Amber. She's a customised um, Junie Mooney cutie, the original one. Um, and her sister, who I have here as well, I have to be very careful with these two, because they've got uh, wobbly heads, tilt heads, you know, they wobble. Um, is beautiful Cora who is a customised lounging lovely I believe um, she's had her hair chopped so they've both got their original scalps um, but this one's had hers severely chopped into a cute little pixie cut uh, they were both customised by um, Mink Yip who um, goes by the name of White Rabbit Blythes. Um, I've had them for several years now and I don't think Mink is doing Blythes anymore. Well, not, certainly not at the moment. She's switched from doing dolls to doing interior design. So her Instagram, which is still called um, White Rabbit Blythes, is now um, features her house. There we go, I'll show you these two together, my lovely sisters. Um, features her house and all the incredible um, design and interiors that she's done on that one. So do check it out. She's so talented. Makes you quite mad. <laughs> no, she's lovely. Um, so I tell you what, while I've got them here, I'll, sh I'll give you a quick flip through their eye chips as well. Because um, give them their moment in the spotlight. So, Amber here, so this first set of chips, um, these are like gold. She doesn't have a pupil in this set. They're just sort of gold, goldy, um, like, um, what's the word I'm trying to look for? I don't know. No idea. <laughs> They're gold. 
So I'm having severe case of menopause brain at the moment. So um, words just disappear out of my head, uh, people's names, all sorts of things. Um, I just go with it. Um, I can show you her sleep eyelids. So once again, they are also um, sort of gold. Gold on it. <laughs> Oh, I wish I could. I wish I could speak. I'm not sure if these are her original eyelashes or not. They're rather fabulous, aren't they? Okay, so then she has these lovely sort of greeny, green and amber pair of eyes. I'm trying to show you so that the ring light's not um, getting in the way. Um, And she has a blue and gold pair, which are rather lovely. And oh, these are these are gold and amber as well, but they're the camera's probably not doing them justice. They're actually like according to where the light is, they, they show all sorts of different shades and colours. Really lovely. We'll leave those on you for now and show you. Oh, I'll show you her wrinkles as well. Lovely ambery wrinkles. Sorry, I'm in the wrong place. Can't really see. Those and then on this one, it's got like amber coloured charms. And this one's got a little dragonfly on it um, and a heart and um, Mink named named them so Mink named her Amber so hence I think the Amber charms and and um, sort of her colouring and everything she's Amber and Cora she named Cora Cora too luckily I like the names I'll show you her charms to start with so she's got like a little wicked little skull things on hers and then she's got um, a key with the white rabbit blinds um, motif okay so Cora's eyes the first set are sort of silver grey side looking her her eyelids are fabulous. They're black. And I'm not sure if you can see, but on a diagonal, they've they're half of them diagonally wise are glittered black. So I'm not sure if the camera's picking that up. But um, so then she's got a pair of these ambery pinky eye chips as well, quite similar to Cora's. And these are lovely, these are green sparkly ones. And then she's got, I think these ones are Papalina ones. So these are brown, again, browny pinky chips. Anyway, so those are my girls who I am making the di diorama for. Um, and this one is wearing her circus, her sort of gothicy circus dress, which is made by Karen Ruby, um, who I'll, I'll link. Uh, Karen's still definitely still making um, doll clothes and things, so I'll uh, put a link to her uh, down below. Um, and she makes these great dresses and outfits that are um, meant to look like they're a bit stained and they're just brilliant and that's kind of what gave me the idea um so this is a circus dress that she's made but it's a bit stained and and you know definitely looking this uh, victorian style so that's what gave me the idea to make the diorama into a sort of dressing room area um but to try and make it look a bit dark and shabby and 
microscopically. Um, so that's what I'm trying to do. Um, Amber is not is not wearing something by Karen um, Ruby. Have I got what have I got her in? Oh yeah, she's wearing a corset, and I can't remember who I got that from. And these little shorts, this they, this I put this these two things together. They didn't come together. Did Splatter Girl make those? I can't remember. I can't. They might have been part of an outfit by Splatter Girl, actually. I think they were. Um, anyway, so this is kind of her uh, trapeze. It's meant to be her trapeze um, outfit. Anyway, um, that's them. Let's put them. If I put them down, I can show you what I've been doing for the diorama. Okay. So the mirror is the first thing I, I've done. I showed you the mirror on uh, a video that I made a couple of videos ago, I think. Um, it's just a mirror from AliExpress that came. It was all white plastic like this. Um, and I've painted it. I've painted it black um, with acrylic paint. I didn't prep it in any way. I just painted straight onto it. Um, and I, the only thing is that I needed to do two coats um, but other than that it, it worked out well I was a bit concerned that it might not work at all just trying to paint on the plastic but it did uh, so I did black all over and then it's got these raised rose motifs on it which I've painted gold and red on the sides and then on the mirror itself I was trying to turn it so you're not looking at the light um, I did oh, there we go. Um, gold roses top and bottom and then at the side I did um, and you can see <laughs> you can see my naked my naked rowing this is why I haven't one of the reasons why I haven't got the camera looking at the BJD's today is because I've had to strip half of them naked including poor Rowan who just got a flash of there <laughs> because of the hot weather and the no air conditioning that we have here um, in the UK um, it was like 38 degrees up here in the loft because of course hot air rises so even though I had all the windows open it was so hot up here um, that I was uh, I was terrified that my dolls who were wearing black or dark colours were going to get stained so I stripped them all off <laughs> so it's like a nudist camp back there at the minute <laughs> and I've just poor Rowan I've just given you a flash of her in the mirror look woohoo <laughs> anyway back to the mirror so um that's that um, I was really pleased with how that came out and how um, how well the paint took to it so I think I might even get myself some more of those if they've still got some and paint them different colours um, and then some of my other dolls uh, some of my smaller BJDs um, could use them as well uh, and then the other thing that I got from AliExpress uh, that I've been painting for the diorama was this screen now this screen actually came four pieces um, but four pieces would be a bit too big for the diorama um, but as you can if you can just sort of fold it when it's through um, so that came like this brown plastic so again I just painted straight onto it with a black acrylic paint so now I have a nice black screen to go with the mirror um, for the room so that's those two things. Then the other thing I've been working on still is the curtain. Oh, the curtain. I want the curtain to cover one side of my diorama because one side of the diorama has got a window in it and I don't want the window visible. Um, so I thought I would just make a curtain to cover that wall um, because then it would be like a circus, you know, 
tent where you just things are separated by a curtain that's my that was my thinking um, so I've been trying to make this curtain I've been using the technique that I saw on a channel called Bentley House Minis um, it's a girl who makes brilliant doll houses and everything that goes inside them and she has this great um, tutorial about how to make curtains so they look so they like they you get them to drape like you want them to and basically you take your curtain material soak it in a, a solution of water and glue then you pin it onto a bit of matte you know, foam board which you've covered with foil and you place pin the curtain how you want it to look so you drape it and pin it in place and then when it, when it dries it dries solid and it you know you just hang it up and it stays and it looks like it's draped if that makes sense so i thought i would try and do the same thing with my curtain but of course my curtain is much bigger than the curtains she was working on so it was only partially successful so i ended up maybe i probably didn't put enough glue in the water maybe so it wasn't really as stiff it's still got some movement in it i've had to glue the top you might be able to see i've had to put extra glue on over the top to get the um pleats to sort of stay where i put them it's ripped on purpose because i'm trying to make it all look shabby and old yeah it's okay but it doesn't the material looks too red it looks too fresh i tried to dye it with coffee grounds it didn't work um so i'm thinking i might just have to paint it um make some sort of acrylic solution up and then paint it somehow so that it looks a bit worn and rubbish um and then i'm trying to make a palmet to go over the top to cover the glue marks um of where i had to glue it so let me just so it'll kind of end up like, that's just slid down isn't it? like that you get the idea i think anyway it's still a work in progress that's that let me let me hold corner again while i talk to you so you've got something nice to look at red material everywhere that's that um the other thing i've been working on is i have been working on rowan's story um still i have i still haven't written the beginning <laughs> i know how it begins i just haven't written it down uh, but i have written five thousand words of of her story um, so um, that's great I've, I've not managed to write that much um, of a story before well only once I wrote a story for my daughters um, when they were very much younger they both had um, reading ages that were far in advance of their actual ages which meant any books that they <laughs> any books that they could read weren't suitable for them if that makes sense so i did write them um a story myself once and that i think that was a seven thousand word story so that ended up um that's the most i've ever written uh, in a story before so i did that <laughs> um but that was definitely just for them um yeah so i've been working on that um i haven't ordered uh my rex yet um I'm still figuring out what to do about that um, but I am going to order the outfit that I found for him um, but I'm not going to order it yet because we're going away on holiday in a couple of weeks um, and I don't want it to arrive when we're away <laughs> so um, I figured I would order it just before we went uh, and then because it's, I can't remember, it's not, it's in the EU, I think, where I'm 
we'll bring it from. It's not in the UK. So it will take uh, a little while. So um, I figure that should be um, a safer option than risking it getting here uh, and me not being here because I'm not sure how it will come. And if they can't get it through the letterbox, I don't want to risk them leaving it outside and it getting nicked because that's happened before. <laughs> um, so that's that. Um, yes, I will let you know um, when I have some more news to tell you. And uh, in the meantime, I'm still watching all your videos and enjoying them. And um, yes, enjoying the not quite so hot weather now. Anyway, thanks for sticking with me for 20 minutes. Take care. Bye.